Greetings, friends, and welcome. Are sure the microphone's on? Can you, is the mic on? Okay, great. So we're here today to mark an achievement, and this achievement is really a chapter in a much longer novel. The story of this novel is not uncommon for urban rivers all over the world, and each city is in a different chapter in this very long story of addressing trash and urban water quality. So I'm Matt Reese. I'm the director of sustainability and watershed management here at DC Water. And there's two parts of that title. First of all, sustainability. It means that we're making the right decisions to provide our crucial services not only today, but far into the future. Sustainability takes into account the long term and our water quality challenges and the legacy we've inherited here are truly intergenerational in nature. Now the river we float above today was first mapped in 1612. Captain John Smith came up from Jamestown and he called this the Eastern Branch of the Potomac. Back then this river was crystal clear. It was teeming with fish. It was much wider than it is now. It was deep enough to sail ocean going vessels all the way up to Bladensburg in Maryland. And over the centuries, the surrounding land saw agricultural development, urbanization in the 1700s and 1800s and through the 1900s. And the natural riverbank was hardened with stone and steel. And the natural creeks were paved over, turned into sewers, which then brought the city's waste directly to the river. And this is the legacy that we've inherited. But in the last year, we've seen the single largest improvement in water quality over all of those centuries. Now we're going to hear more about the exciting Clean Rivers Project in just a bit and I want to acknowledge Carlton Ray who's the director of DC Water's Clean Rivers Project who's joined us here today. And the second part of my title is watershed management. And what that means is we collectively need to focus on the whole watershed, not just here in DC, and we're here at the lower end of a 176 square mile watershed. It stretches far up into Maryland. And every block and every yard and every road will be a part of the solution that helps us to get to that final chapter of that novel where we want to get, which is ultimately a fishable and swimmable Anacostia River. But the improvements we're seeing here today are being felled out to the Potomac, down to the Chesapeake Bay, all the way out to the Atlantic Ocean. And what this story reads like now for the rest of the country, beyond DC, I'm pleased to introduce the administrator of the US Environmental Protection Agency, Andrew Wheeler. Thank you. Good afternoon and happy Earth Day. Today, millions of Americans and people around the world will gather to celebrate the blessings of nature and reflect on the state of the environment. Here in the U.S., we should be proud of the progress that we've made. Next year, we will celebrate the 50th anniversary of the first Earth Day, which also corresponds to the EPA's 50th anniversary, and we've come a long way since 1970. Before the creation of EPA, more than 40 percent of our nation's drinking water systems failed to meet even the most basic health standards. Today, over 92 percent of community water systems meet all health-based standards all of the time. We're also a global leader in clean air progress. Since 1970, we've reduced the six criteria air pollutants 73% while growing the economy over 260%. We still have challenges before us, but if the past is any indication, I have faith in our ability to address them. One of those challenges we are addressing is marine litter. And that's why we're here today on Earth Day. We wanted to find a unique way to shine a light on the important work being done to address this issue. Each year, billions of pounds of waste enter our oceans, and a portion of that waste flows through rivers like the Anacostia. Not only does marine litter harm aquatic life, but it also hurts the economies built around the waterways. The United States is committed to addressing the problem head on and we're delighted to be joined by one of our partners in this effort, Japan's ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Sugiyama. He and his wife recently hosted me for their cherry blossom reception, and it was a wonderful event. EPA has worked closely with Japan to protect human health and the environment for over 40 years. 
In June, Japan will host the first ever G20 meeting of environmental ministers, and I look forward to participating in that meeting. The U.S. applauds Japan's leadership of the G20 and their focus on the environment, especially on the issue of marine litter. I also want to recognize and thank the EPA staff in attendance today, including Lee Tanner, who helped set up today's event. And thanks to Senior Deputy Director Richard Jackson of DC's Environmental Services Administration, and a special thank you to Matt Bijou of the DC Water for coordinating the tour today. Their skimmer boats that we traveled on today remove up to 500 tons of waste a year from the region's waterways. This could be a model for other cities here in the United States and other countries around the world. This is in addition to all the other work that DC Water does to protect the environment and provide high quality water services. We are encouraged by the progress we're seeing across the District of Columbia's waterways. In August of 2017, EPA awarded more than $3.5 million to the district for projects to control stormwater runoff and help clean up the Anacostia River. I know that Mayor Bowser has set a goal to make the Anacostia River a fishable and swimmable water by the year 2032. We, we want to help the city meet its environmental goals even sooner. The same goes for other cities around the country. I was recently in South Florida to award Miami-Dade County a $99 million loan to build new wastewater infrastructure that will protect their beaches. Through the Water Infrastructure Financing and Innovation Act, WIFIA, we've issued eight of these low interest loans totaling over $2 billion in credit assistance. These loans will help finance over $4 billion in water infrastructure projects while creating over 6,000 jobs. Infrastructure and clean water are top priorities for President Trump, and WIFIA could be a financial model for the international community to deploy. When it comes to marine litter, we are focusing on improving waste and recycling. Approximately 80% of ocean trash comes from land-based sources. To be more effective, we must address the problem before it gets to the ocean. On the domestic front, we held our first ever recycling summit at EPA this past November. The summit brought together leaders from all levels of the recycling, recycling value chain to advance ways that we can strengthen the recycling industry and markets. We will reconvene the summit again this year to continue our progress. We also have over 50 partnership projects across the country under our Trash Free Waters program, including our work with DC to support research here on the Anacostia. We are working to scale up this program both domestically and internationally. In Panama, for example, we helped install the country's first ever trash boom in a highly polluted Panama City River. We have similar pilot programs in place in Peru and Jamaica, and we are focusing on transforming these pilots into comprehensive solutions. We will work with our Japanese and European counterparts to expand these efforts to the six Asian countries that contribute nearly 60% of the world's marine waste, China, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, and Thailand. In that order, the U.S. is ranked 20th. There is innovative work being done here in the U.S. and around the world, and we want to provide the leadership needed to elevate that work to the next level. Earth Day is an appropriate time to focus on the issues of marine litter. Our rivers, bays, and oceans are critical to life on Earth. We are committed to ensuring all Americans can enjoy and benefit from these blessings for generations to come. This means highlighting the important work that folks like DC Water are doing so it can be replicated around the world. And it means working closely with both domestic and international communities to improve recycling and raise public awareness. We are grateful for Japan's leadership in that regard, and it is a privilege, as I said, to be joined by the Japanese ambassador to the United States Please join me in welcoming Ambassador Sujiyama to share some remarks. Um, well, before uh, I uh, start talking about uh, for everything else, uh, which is substantive, uh, may I just say that uh, that was really a fun to be on board. Um, my, uh, appar apparently for my first time, and I was uh, given a chance to uh, drive by myself, uh, which was certainly crazy. Uh, but not only uh, fun, but uh, very good experience sensed by myself, 
uh, and uh, feel uh, what it's all about to clean up the uh, water pollution and particularly uh, plastic debris and others. I um, uh, can tell you that uh, some 10 years ago or something, uh, in back in Tokyo, uh, the headquarters of the Foreign Office, I was assigned the uh, Director General for Global Issues, uh, which includes uh, all the environmental issues uh, uh, and the biodiversity, uh, SDGs, uh, climate change, and something. So, uh, although this uh, was my first time to be on board, but I think uh, I can claim that uh, I'm not that much in familiar with uh, these sort of things, uh, which uh, must be given uh, one of the top priorities for the international communities, and particularly from uh, between uh, US, Japan, and the uh, and uh, EU and the other sort of you know uh, ASEAN countries. Uh, Administrator Wheeler, Mr. Jo uh, George, uh, my friends, new and old, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to get out of the office, indeed, uh, out, of, out uh, uh, onto the uh, uh, water on this Earth Day. And uh, the weather seems to be celebrating us. Uh, not that, that much hot and not much those, those are, uh, cold, windy sometimes. Spring has come. Uh, the administration wheeler was kind enough to mention the uh, Cherry Blossoms Festival uh, reception uh, at my uh, uh, residence. Uh, uh, this year, uh, this uh, week, uh, it's going to be the last uh, week, uh, we're going to just wrap things up by the end of this uh, Thursday or Friday or something. Uh, but uh, so far, the uh, Cherry Blossom Festival seems to have been a great success. Uh, the, uh, there is something uh, renewing about Triple River, so I thank Mr. Wheeler for inviting me. Thank you once again. Uh, the author, Norman McLean, in his novel, A River Runs Through It, wrote, Eventually, all things merge into one, and the river runs through it. Unfortunately, trash and runoff and pollution also merge into our rivers and oceans. More than 8 million tons of plastic goes into the ocean each year. Uh, uh, that is something which I've been told. If we do not take significant action, one estimate even says our oceans may carry more plastic than fish by 2050. I love this schema boat, as I said at the outset, and work it does. The great thing about schema boats and the great things about DC water is that they are showing that we are not hopeless. To eliminate plastic waste uh, flow, uh, flowing into our waters, we need better cleanup, better waste management, and better recycling. Japan has detailed rules about organizing trash into correct categories. Actually, when I was uh, living in a very small apartment in the midst of Tokyo, uh, the, uh, the manager of that uh, whole building uh, was too strict that if you don't do that right way into the categories, which is 10 types or something, the plastics or bottles or papers or, you know, wash, I mean, re recycling thing and something, there are at least uh, six or seven or eight uh, different kind of colors of the uh, plastic bags. And if you don't follow him, he doesn't do the work. Uh, he labeled that is not correctly done. So uh, I think uh, uh, it, it is in that uh, sense uh, Japan and Japanese community seems to be uh, really fully aware of the danger of uh, leaving as they are. And if uh, we don't do that, uh, uh, sooner than later, things are going to be really, really done in a very, very bad manner. You know, Japan went into, uh, went through uh, Minamata diseases or, you know, public uh, pollutions in air and the water. And uh, over the past uh, maybe uh, half a century or something, uh, situation seems to have uh, been gotten much, much better. The air seems to have been cleaner. The water seems to have been uh, uh, cleaner. Uh, and yet, we do believe that we have much to do together with you and together with the Europeans and together with the other international community members. So, um, the, uh, as I said, uh, to eliminate plastic uh, waste uh, flowing into our waters, we need better cleanup, better waste management, and better recycling. As I said, Japan has been doing that. Japan also promotes innovation, such as environmentally friendly uh, diamass plastics. 
this year we are hosting, as the administrator rightly mentioned, and as he was kind enough to say that uh, he uh, plans uh, intends to uh, join the ministerial uh, to be followed by the summit. Uh, G20 summit and the marine plastic li uh, litter will be one of the important items on the agenda. Uh, we are going to put an emphasis upon uh, this, including other uh, things like uh, SDGs and other certain global issues. The, uh, it, it is in that sense that the G20 environmental and energy ministers will meet for the first time in June. Uh, as I said repeatedly, your administrator was uh, already kind enough to say that uh, he had an intent to take part in the lead the uh, discussion. The uh, I hope administrator uh, 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 is going to be one of the uh, uh, leaders, you know, uh, initiating uh, all sorts of you know, important problems, including this. Uh, he told me that uh, he was about to uh, say something about this boat. Um, uh, Primarily, he uh, is uh, 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 too kind enough to mention about uh, riding the boat with me. So uh, you guys must report to the our uh, environmental minister prior to that, and uh, eventually to my prime minister about this. <laughs> uh, but um, the uh, Japan and the United States already cooperate globally on the environment and uh, every sense of the word. And I look forward to further cooperation in this years ahead because. Uh, this year happens to be particularly G20, uh, in which Japan is uh, hosting uh, all the ministerials and to be ended up with the other uh, summit. I understand that the Clean River project of DC Water has dramatically improved the uh, Anacostera River's health. I would like to congratulate Mr. George and the staff of DC Water who have worked to bring about this progress. In closing, just let me say, I think it is so important for citizens to see the progress can be made on the environment for every human uh, being, not only for the United States of America, not only for Japan, but the whole international community. And I am happy to be here today to showcase an example of that progress. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Richard Jackson. I'm the Senior Deputy Director at the uh, Department of Energy and Environment here in D.C. And I just want to say it's an opportunity to uh, be here. Uh, unfortunately, my director couldn't make it, so I'm speaking on his behalf and, and that of the city. So uh, you know, I want to thank this opportunity to be with uh, the EPA Administrator, D.C. Water, and all the dignitaries that are here for Earth Day today. Uh, our agency has a lot of events planned around the city all week, and uh, this, this is a great way to kick it off. So uh, I think this event is very fitting for being here on the river. Uh, our agency is doing a lot of work in conjunction with uh, DC Water, in conjunction with uh, EPA. We have a lot of partnerships and we're doing a lot of work. In addition to the skimmers that you see here, uh, upriver that are out of sight are uh, trash traps that we have uh, stationed along the river on the tributaries and also uh, minimizes or reduces the amount of uh, solid waste that comes into the river and kind of complements what the skimmer does. Anything that gets through there, uh, the skimmers can uh, come through and, and pick up on that and, and just get us to that zero waste in the river that we're all looking for. So um, I think the river is a perfect example of the progress that's being made uh, here and throughout the nation in terms of getting us clean water. One of the uh, bigger projects we have going on also is in addition to clean water, we also want to ensure that the uh, sediments and uh, the other areas underneath the, underneath the water is clean as well. So we're uh, conducting a, uh, a sediment project here in the city uh, to look at the nine, nine miles that are within the city limits of uh, cleaning those sediment to ensure that they're not contaminated, remove those out of there, which will only enhance the cleaning of the water, would only enhance the uh, achievability of fishable and swimmable uh, by 2032. So those are the kind of things we've been working on, again, in partnership, because without uh, DC Water, without EPA, without the state of Maryland, because we get a lot of stuff that all our stuff comes through Maryland, so we have to work with them as well. So we're doing all those kind of things, and we've been working on that particular project for a few years and, and finally made some, making a great progress on it. So uh, one of the things that I know they did want to highlight is because of all of our hard work, we finally received our first uh, uh, passing grade 
from the Anacostia Water Society in 2018, which was a, a big accomplishment for us. We took a lot of pride in that because, uh, as Mr. Foster's in the back there like to say, uh, he likes to beat up on us about that. But uh, we finally made it past his uh, high bar, and we welcomed the high bar, and we welcomed the fact that we were able to uh, finally meet it. So uh, hopefully it's not one and done, but it'll be a continuation from that point forward. So we'll continue that going. Um, we're very optimistic about the uh, condition of the water, condition of the river, and just want to continue to work towards that and ensure that um, the work continues, that there's no lapse, that there's no, uh, we've gotten there, that it's just a continuous improvement. That's the main thing that we're looking for. That's the main thing we will strive for and continue to strive for. So uh, it's through these type of partnerships that um, we feel that we're, um, we're on the right track and we will continue it. And again, Earth, Earth Week, is, uh, is a great kickoff point for this year to uh, really expand upon that point. So with that, I just want to say thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Administrator Wheeler, uh, Ambassador Fujiyama, Sugiyama, and uh, Deputy Director J Jackson, uh, Richard Jackson, for joining us. There is no better way to celebrate uh, uh, the Earth Day uh, by celebrating uh, the clean water that we enjoy on our side, uh, uh, the life-sustaining, life, uh, you know, life-maintaining element of the Earth. So thank you so much again. And also, I want to take this moment to thank uh, DC Water employees, the Team Blue, uh, who uh, maintains and sustains uh, uh, the clean water and work uh, every day maintaining this. So. Uh, DC Water, like uh, uh, almost uh, more than 700 communities uh, uh, around the United States, has the challenges of a combined sewer because uh, one third of our assets, the uh, infrastructure that was uh, uh, built uh, so to serve an agrarian community, uh, you know, and uh, uh, so that has uh, overflowing uh, sewage and the storm water when it rains. And uh, the Clean Rivers project is the one that uh, we, have, we, have, we have been uh, uh, mandated by EPA, but with the help of uh, uh, the federal EPA as well as uh, uh, the DEOE, we have been successfully implementing for the many years. But you have seen uh, uh, this boat, uh, you know, our uh, skimmers that has been uh, chugging along uh, uh, the river for many years. Uh, we, we, have, we had this uh, uh, in service for almost uh, uh, 20 years, two decades, uh, two decades. Uh, this has been serving this community, cleaning and maintaining, uh, 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 you know, this river, the aesthetic appearance that uh, the community uh, come to have enjoyed. The 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 new two uh, uh, skimmers that you see here, uh, named by the DC residents as uh, Float Sam and Jet Sam, uh, it's been commissioned in 2017. Uh, we spent over uh, one million dollars uh, for commissioning these two boats. And, uh, uh, you know, it's been serving as uh, exceptionally well since, removing uh, almost 500 tons of uh, debris a year. Uh, you know, it's a major reason for uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the appealing and inviting appearance of uh, uh, this river. Uh, it embodies DC Water's commitment in uh, uh, bringing the water quality achievement uh, sooner and faster. As I suggested, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, combined sewer issue uh, that we have been facing, uh, DC, DC Water has been working with the US EPA, DOE, and uh, building the tunnel. The first part of the tunnel, uh, the Anacostia Tunnel, was commissioned almost a year ago. Uh, major part of it, we are still mining the remaining, uh, the last section of the tunnel, which is costing us almost uh, 2.7, close to $3 billion. Since uh, uh, the tunnel went into service, uh, we have uh, treated more than 500 billion gallons of uh, combined sewer, uh, prevented it from overflowing into the river. And also we captured uh, uh, close to 1,100 tons of trash, uh, preventing it from uh, going into the Anacostia River. So uh, uh, the tunnel's uh, performance has been uh, significant, uh, and uh, along with uh, uh, the jet sam and float sam and the crew that comes in, uh, uh, you know, maintains uh, the appearance of uh, the river that we seem to enjoy. So uh, our work hasn't ended yet. I mean, you know, because uh, cleaning up of the river is an intergenerational engagement uh, that a community engages in. 
uh, uh, you know, uh, DC Water side, uh, uh, we, we, we will be doing our commitments and then uh, taking it to the next generation. So, uh, uh, you know, the boat was uh, handled part of the way by a young man, uh, uh, Luke here. I mean, thank you for safely getting us back to the shore. So uh, our efforts are going to take it to a level uh, where we can maintain, uh, we can hand over this to the next generation as clean as we can, and then they can take it to the uh, the next glory and during their generations and the technology that comes along. Uh, so uh, I just want to take this moment again for uh, thank uh, EPA staff and other members uh, that made uh, this event a success. And uh, uh, this is a great way to uh, celebrate the year today. So uh, I'll open up this moment to ask any questions for uh, uh, any of us uh, or even uh, any members of the uh, team here on the dais. Do you have any questions from the press? I, it's, it's, uh, David Schultz, Berga, so I wanted to uh, ask uh, uh, Mr. Wheeler while you're here uh, sort of a different question. Uh, at last, earlier this month, uh, I used to indicate to Congress that the EPA might be taking some action uh, in the near future on asbestos. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Are you guys planning to prepare uh, new restrictions on asbestos or even expand these? Well, we issued last week our updated significant new use proposal, which should stop any new uses of asbestos entering the marketplace while we conduct the asbestos review under the new TSCA. What, why we did that was we were conducting the, the review, which takes two to three years. We wanted to make sure that during that two to three year period, no new products came into the marketplace. So we did this announcement and this new program to make sure that we stop any new uses of asbestos without going through the EPA first. So it was a stopgap measure. And I point out that we're the first administration in over 25 years to try to limit asbestos in any way. The TOSCA review will, which is why we did this interim step to plug up the loophole to make sure that during that two to three year period, we don't have new products coming in. Sure. So any other questions from the press? Yeah, I'm, could you step a little closer? I I'm, can't hear you, I'm sorry. Certainly. Um, so at, at the G7 meeting last year in, in Halifax, um, I talked about the marine plastic debris with all of my counterparts, in particular the um, Japanese environmental minister and the European environmental minister, the EU. Um, and we all, all seven countries agreed, but the three of us in particular, and we've had discussions since then that we need to do something to address the marine plastic debris going into the oceans, um, knowing that 60% of it comes from six Asian countries. And, and I think that there's a lot of experience that the Japan has in working with those countries. We have a lot of experience with some marine plastic debris issues here in this hemisphere. And we're looking to see if we can take some of the pilots that we've yeah. done um, individually and take those and try to go to the next step or the next phase, which is to try to take them to, you know, to the next level to get the marine um, plastic debris cleaned up, in particular from those six, six Asian countries. I think Administration uh, uh, will uh, seems to have uh, made it abundantly clear. Uh, first, of, first of all, have to life about the last G7 meeting. Um, the uh, the positions are, are, are quite uh, closer between uh, U.S. and Japan and uh, some countries, uh, but some countries are not necessarily uh, with us. Um, then uh, we uh, try to make it further certain effort. To, to try to get some kind of you know, consensus among not only G7 but G20. But uh, uh, frankly speaking, when it comes to G20, uh, as he mentioned, uh, which includes uh, more than G7. Right. So uh, uh, maybe we would need further kind of effort to uh, get in touch with those uh, who are not that much sort of upcoming with uh, this uh, particular issue. But that doesn't mean to say that uh, we are totally hopeless. I think uh, we try to continue working together 
uh, to try to hopefully come up with uh, some kind of consensus, even among G20. But we'll have to see. Thank you. Any other questions? Any questions for the drop of water? <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here. It's a beautiful Earth Day to our dignitaries and guests. Thank you for joining us here on the beautiful Anacostia River. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.